The Reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jessie, travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you, Brother Ford. Hello, praise the Lord. This is Prophet Ford. Listen, I have a tremendous invitation for you. I'm coming to Lone Oak, Arkansas to the Temple of Living Waters at 401 Reynolds Street for an old-fashioned Book of Acts power-packed Holy Ghost revival. I'm telling you, it's going to be Lone Oak's visitation. We're coming at the end of the month of March. We're coming March 29th, 30th and 31st. We're going to be there, and I'm telling you, with Pastor Glenn Harris and the, the Temple of Living Waters family, so I want you to make plans now. Meet us in Lone Oak. I sense in my spirit it's going to be a tremendous outpouring. We believe in God for signs, wonders, and miracles, and direst gifts of the Holy Ghost. Believe in God. God, that lives will be changed. So listen, friend, put it on your calendar. Make plans to meet us every night. Amen. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, March 29, 30, and 31. Be there. Temple of Living Waters, right there in the city of Lone Oak, Arkansas. Lift up your Bible. Make this confession with me. This is my Bible. It is the mind of God clothed in my vocabulary. It reveals the will of God to me. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. I will hear the word of God tonight. Faith will come into my heart. I will believe and receive the good things that God has for me because this is the word of God. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. In the beginning was the word the word was with God, and the word was God. Therefore, I know when I have the word of God on my situation, I have God on my situation. Therefore, my situation must change in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want you to get your Bibles and go to the book of Exodus, chapter 35. Now, we're still talking about supernatural money supernatural money money that you didn't earn money that you didn't go out and do sweat equity to get amen uh, and that's the only way you know how to get it but I want to talk to you about supernatural money God began to stir my heart supernatural money will come to you because of the anointing of wealth favor God is releasing an anointing of favor particularly for the purpose of drawing wealth and resources into your life and into his kingdom what did I say into your life and into his kingdom that means you're the conduit you're the kingdom channel now don't, don't, don't you block up the canal now <laughs> He put in your life and never make it to the kingdom. We're going to have to send the angelic snatch man. The repo angel going to come repo some wealth. We're going to have to send out the repo angel to come get it back. <laughs> All right. That's enough of that. Watch this. I'm going to read it again. God is releasing an anointing of favor particularly for the purpose of drawing wealth and resources into your life and into his kingdom. Now, with this anointing of wealth favor comes wisdom to produce wealth and wisdom to handle wealth. What did I say? Wisdom to produce wealth and wisdom to handle wealth. Somebody say, I need both. Praise the Lord. In many ways, this anointing will help us overcome our lack of knowledge of economic systems and give us the ability, watch this, to govern these economic systems that we had no prior knowledge of. Yeah, you missed it. In many ways, 
this anointing will help us overcome our lack of knowledge of economic systems. And this anointing is going to give us the ability to govern these economic systems that we had no prior knowledge of. It, I, God is just awesome. I mean, here we were uninformed and ignorant of a thing at one point, And then God just drops an anointing on us and all of a sudden we run and stuff. I mean, say what you want to say. Joseph ain't never ran no country. The boy was an inmate this morning. And this afternoon, he a prime minister. And tomorrow, he running the nation. And did it well. Oh, okay, okay. Y'all in Exodus waiting on me. All right. Exodus 35. Exodus 35 in verse 30. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord have called by name. If he called his name, he can call yours. He have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri. That means the son of fire. And the son of Ur, of the tribe of Judah. And hath filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. Boy, didn't know nothing, didn't, know, didn't go to school to get this. God did it. And anointing came on his life, and with that anointing came all this. Mm -hmm. Whew, thank you, Jesus. I'm getting full already. Mm. All right, go on. Understanding in all manner of workmanships and to devise curious works to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in the cutting of stones to set them and in carving of wood to make any manner of cunning work. That, you know, this ain't just no little shabby stuff. And he put in his heart that he may teach. Look, he didn't know nothing. Now he's a professor. Folk got to come to him to learn how to do it. And you know, when you see how good it looks, what you going to say? Teach me how to do it. He's like, okay. It ain't going to be one of them. Oh, man, that was just the Lord. I don't know how I done that. I don't know how I accomplished I don't know how I did that. No, no, no. See, God, I'm trying to tell you, the boy didn't know none of this until God dropped an anointing on him. And you got to understand, Solomon was a kid asking for help to guide people and woke up the next morning and had wisdom of the ages. God, I'm going to go back to that word he told me now. Supernatural money will come to you because of the anointing of wealth favor. God is releasing an anointing of favor, particularly for the purpose of drawing wealth and resources into your life and into his kingdom. With this anointing of wealth, favor comes wisdom to produce wealth, wisdom to handle wealth. And in many uh, ways, the anointing will help us overcome our lack of knowledge of economic systems and give us the ability to govern those systems, which we had no prior knowledge of. The man had no prior knowledge of any of this until one day an anointing came on him. And now, not only do he know how to do it, he can teach you how to do it. Mm -hmm. He can demonstrate and draw blueprints now and draw plans. So in verse 34 again, God have put in his heart that he may teach. See, what I'm trying to show you is what God's doing right now. He ain't going to make you selfish. He's going to let you teach somebody else. Because you know what we think? If I'm the only one to do it, then I got job security. They got to come to me. God said, I ain't messed up about that. I can let 500,000 folks do what you're doing and still bless you. Yes. Yes. And, and you feel more blessed because you done helped somebody else. Except for a few folk, they want to take all the credit. Well, what for me, they wouldn't be doing it. Shut your mouth. <laughs> ah, he had put in his heart. So here's what I want you to see. God had to give him the anointing, and God had to give him the grace to share what he had. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. With this anointing, there comes some things. He put it in his heart to teach. He and Aholiab, the son of a Hishmach of the tribe of Dan. You know, Dan means judge. God is my judge. That's what Daniel means. Then he had... Them he have filled with wisdom. Look at that. God raised up two men in the midst of three million. He filled them with wisdom of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver. That they needed an engraver because some things God wanted need to be engraved. And God didn't have to go and import an engraver from some other heathenistic kingdom. God said, I got engraving wisdom and I got two faithful people. I'm just going to put it on them. Now watch this. Verse 35 again, them hath he filled with wisdom of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cunning workman and of the embroider in blue, in purple, in scarlet, and in fine linen, and of the weaver, the weaver, even of them that do any work of those that devise cunning work. God said, ain't nothing they can't do because they're anointed. 
y'all ain't better. Chapter 36, chapter 36. Y'all gonna make me preach to Brother Ford again tonight. Okay. Thank you. Exodus 36 and 1. Then wrote. God put them in their heart to do it. Now they're doing it. They ain't just talking. They got this ability. Then wrought Bezalel and Aholiab and every wise-hearted man in whom the Lord had put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that the Lord had commanded. Now we know from, verse, from chapter 35 these other wise-hearted men, amen, got theirs by impartation. They got theirs through association with these two men that had received it from God and God began to make an impartation in their lives so that wisdom was transferable. What am I telling you? The anointing of God is transferable. It can be imparted. And when the anointing comes, wisdom comes with the anointing. And sometimes we fail to realize that. We think the anointing is just a hoop and holler. We think the anointing is just to feel good and run around the church. But in the anointing, there's wisdom. There's an entrepreneurial anointing that brings entrepreneurial wisdom. So you got to understand there's an economic anointing that's going to bring economic wisdom. So in other words, don't get there and be nervous because really, I mean, when my daughter was in college, she was sitting around talking with her friends and one of them said, uh, she was a million dollars. So my mama wouldn't know what to do with a million dollars. She said, give it to my mama. She know what to do with it. No, see, you got to understand. So, some people, what I want to say is realistically, that's the truth. How do I know? Well, folk won $500 million in the Powerball and, and they, would, they wind up divorced and broke in five years. So they didn't know what to do with it. They needed what? Economic wisdom. So I want you to understand, sometimes you sit and you look at folk, you, you, you just marvel at folk that, that blow $10,000. How can she take, what you're saying is, if I would have had that money, you, you, you may have wisdom to handle 10000 but if I, if I double it, you may lose it. God said, I ain't going to let that happen. I'm going to put an anointing on you that's going to bring wisdom. You got to think about that. Let's just be for real. If we ain't never handled real riches, we, we've never handled the kingdom riches, then what make you just think you know how? See, but when the anointing for kingdom riches come on you, if the anointing for wealth comes on you from God, there is a wisdom in the anointing. I've seen this in the ministry. People that I've laid hands on and transferred and imparted anointings to, they start operating at a level they wasn't familiar with. And because I had never saw them flow, I asked them, I said, man, when your ministry take off like this? She said, man, I ain't never done none of this until you laid hands on me. When you laid hands on me, uh, this all this just came with that anointing. It was in the anointing. And so there's a wisdom them in the anointing, how to govern the anointing, how to flow under the anointing. So that's why Paul said, don't frustrate the grace. In that grace, amen, is everything you need to operate. But when you frustrate the grace, now you can't stay in that place. Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab and every wise hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom in every one whose heart stirred him up to come to the work to do it. Not just come see it, but come do something. And they received, the ones who had the wisdom received of Moses all the offerings which the children of Israel had wrought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make with all. Now watch this now. I understand that the reason these men received what they were bringing because they were anointed to utilize what they had bought. Did you catch what I said? The reason these men were receiving what the people were bringing freely is because God had anointed them to utilize it. God had anointed them to handle it. What am I telling you? When the anointing for wealth favor comes on you, it's going to precede the wealth, but it's going to draw the wealth. It's going going to bring the wealth to you. Remember, supernatural money will come to you because of the anointing of wealth favor. God is releasing an anointing of favor particularly for the purpose of drawing wealth and resources into your life. So there's, there's some resources that you're praying for that's not coming, but they, they're not going to get there till the anointing gets there. The anointing is going to precede the resources. Why? Because in the anointing is the wisdom how to handle your stuff. So you got to understand that's why we don't backslide. We draw nigh to God. We've been in Goshen and I I've been, see, I've been tracking this thing. God told me, amen, we had seven years of Goshen, meaning to draw nigh to him. And the more we draw nigh to him, amen, the more he can trust us, the more he's going to release in us. And so now we're here, we got four years left, and God said we got four years to set things in order. But God also said in these last four years, he's, it's harvest time that's going to be perpetual. It's not going to stop for four consecutive years. But a lot of us are not even in Goshen. Yeah, drawing out of God. We, we're not in our spot spiritually. Your consecration it has not increased in the last three years. It's been stagnant. 
they received of Moses all the offerings which the children of Israel brought. So what I, want, what I want to do, I want to move away from that verse just for a second to show you that when this anointing comes up on you, you're going to start receiving some stuff. When this anointing comes up on you, amen, and you begin to let it saturate you with the purpose and the wisdom for which it's up on you, instantly the anointing is going to cause you to receive some stuff that you can use. Watch this. Uh, uh, um, Solomon received wisdom that night. The next morning he executed it. The next, I'm talking about God visited the boy in the dream. The next day, they brought a baby to him with a dilemma, and he said, just bring me a sword. And the wisdom of Solomon was noised abroad from that point on, and from the time wisdom got out, all of a sudden, he was the richest man on the planet. Folk would hear about him, and they would come. Queens and kings would come bringing camels loaded. Did, did you hear what I said? I didn't say broke folk came. I didn't say for with EBT cards came. No, 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 no. God starts sending, amen, the wealthy to come to sit at his feet and get his wisdom. You got to understand that people will pay you for what you know, if you know anything. And they bought yet unto him free will offerings every morning. This anointing can cause, amen, a perpetual increase, perpetual inflow. Therefore, you don't have a hoarder's mentality because you know I'm a channel. It's flowing through me. It's coming to me because it's getting through me. And all of a sudden, you know what's going to happen? You're going to begin to expand. And the more that comes to you, the more can go through you. You keep expanding. And that's what God's after. Go to 1 Kings 7. God's after heart expansion. See, in the natural, it ain't good to have an enlarged heart. But spiritually, God's going to enlarge your heart. He's going to enlarge your capacity. He's going to enlarge your spiritual mindset. He's going to enlarge the anointing to draw wealth because you anointed to give. See, when he anoints you to give, he's going to have to, you got to be anointed to receive because you got to have something to give. Because giving is what makes you receive. And when you receive, you got new seed so you can give again. 1 Kings 7, verse 13. And King Solomon, now, uh, let me give y'all a little, little, little bit of heads up. Solomon's building the temple. He's got to the point where he needs these pillars and all this stuff built. And so he needs somebody to do the work. And King Solomon sent and fetched Haram out of Tyre. He was a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali. And his father was a man of Tyre, <clears throat> a worker in brass. And he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon and wrote all his work. You think he was broke? He working for Solomon. He doing all Solomon's work. <laughs> I guarantee you, he, he wasn't broke another day in his life. What, what? Listen, beloved, I want you to make plans to meet me in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. We have an annual revival at the Pleasant View Church with Pastor William Shaw. Been running this revival, amen, since 1989. And, and God has been moving ever since. And I want you to meet us there this year. We're going to just do three days. It's going to be April the 5th through the 7th. But I want you to be there in the city of Pine Bluff, believing God for a move of God, life-changing revelation. So I'm challenging you now. Go ahead and put it on your calendar. Make plans. Set the date. Save the date. Pine Bluff, Arkansas at 1117 North Palm Street. Amen. At the Pleasant View Ministers with Pastor William and Lady Tanya Shaw. We'll be there April 5th through the 7th. And you're invited. I'm looking to see you there. God bless you. What, 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 what I need you to see in verse 14, the boy was a widow, so daddy dead and gone. But he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works in brass. Anything brass, he could handle it. Just bring it to him. He was going to work with it for you. Luke chapter 2 verse 40 says, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Are we growing, but are we getting any wiser? <laughs> I see folk getting older, but I ain't necessarily seeing them getting no wiser. Exodus 28, Exodus 28. Exodus 28. Uh, turn, turn, turn the high in number five down just a little bit. Got a slight pain. Uh, Exodus 28.3. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. God put an anointing on some folk to learn how to tailor make some stuff. I'm trying to tell you, there may be some, listen, if the anointing ain't on you right now, the desire may not be in you. 
What am I trying to get you to understand? God's about to release an anointing for some stuff you ain't never even thought about doing. You ain't never even wanted to do. Just go to bed one night and wake up. Aha, I think I'm going to do this. What makes you think you can do that? I don't know, but when I woke up this morning, I just feel like that's what I'm going to do. And all of a sudden, there's a desire in you to do it. There's an anointing on you to do it. And all of a sudden, things just go to falling in place. And people be like, how did you do that? You just woke up one day, and it, it's a God thing. See, your God connection is essential. That's why we got to stay in Goshen. We got to keep drawing out of God. I don't know about you, but I don't have time to get distracted. I don't have time to be drawn out to foolishness. It's time to focus upon him. Mm, Isaiah 45 verse 3. Isaiah 45 and 3. I'm talking about supernatural money will come to you because of the anointing of wealth favor. God is releasing an anointing of favor, particularly for the purpose of drawing wealth. You notice I didn't say for you chasing it. Drawing wealth and resources into your life and into his kingdom. With this anointing of wealth favor comes wisdom to produce wealth and wisdom to handle wealth. Uh, you, God said you can make it and you're going to be able to take it because I'm going to give you the wisdom to handle it. In many ways this anointing will help us overcome. See that's some things you don't know. How many of sometimes what you don't know has a way of intimidating you but when the wisdom of God comes on you I know. I didn't know before right now but I know how to do that. I'm telling you one time, y'all heard my story about the trunk wouldn't, wouldn't close and, and I had a, a clothes rack tying down the trunk on the Cadillac. I said God this don't work. The mechanic couldn't figure it out. Now, that's what he do. He did everything. He said, I'm going to try one more thing. If it don't work, you just going to have to buy a new part. I said, Lord, I don't want to spend that kind of money on no part for this trunk. This trunk needs to close. And I had a mini vision just like that. I screamed. I know how to do it. He started laughing. I screamed so loud. When he got there, I had it fixed. I closed the trunk and took the key over. He said, how you do that? It's a mechanic want to know how the man who called him to do the job knew how to do the job. I don't know how to do the job, but I have, bam, a mini vision. Just that quick five seconds, I knew how to do it. What am I trying to tell you is you could be sitting here and something that the old folks said got you stumped for a moment, and then all of a sudden, I got this. You just rise up, and like a champion, you overcome it and continue. See, I'm trying to get you to understand something. It's God can do something in a moment that's going to last longer than a moment. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 45. In verse 3, Isaiah 45 and verse 3. See, God going to bless all the work of your hand. Whatever you put your hand to is going to prosper, but he going to lead you to what to put your hands to. And verse 3 says, I will give thee. I will do what? Give thee the what? Treasures. Pause right there. Treasures here is the same word as storehouses in Malachi 3. I'm going to give you the depositories. I'm going to give you the treasuries. I'm going to give you the storehouses. In other words, today I'm going to give you the stash box. I'm going to show you where they got their stash at. He said, I'm going to give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret. I told you you're going to give you their stash. They got it all stashed away. Government don't know where it's at. They've been evading taxes for years. One is stacked up to the ceiling. And God said, I'm about to give it to you. Well, see, back in, y'all remember Al Capone back in the day? A real gangster. Well, in 19, uh, okay, I ain't going to lie. I ain't, ain't get the date right, but in the 70s, in Chicago, somebody bought an old building that, uh, Capone had for his headquarters. Now the FBI and the CIA, everybody done searched this building for decades. They ain't found nothing. Capone done died and went wherever he went. They tanned the building down. I'm talking about a crane with a ball and chain. And all of a sudden, money started flying all over the streets. Money that was buried in the walls in that building. We've been there for decades. And I'm talking about a whole focus. You're talking about a traffic jam. Money coming out the sky. I feel led to stop. I, I, I ain't in that big a hurry. I get the Starbucks later. Now, what am I telling you here? The money was hid. He hid it so well the FBI couldn't find it. But the destruction crew came in and they found it. Well, God said, I'm going to give you the hidden treasures of darkness and hidden riches in secret places. Don't you understand there's treasures hidden all over this planet and God knows where every stash is. He knows where every pirate's trunk is. Amen. He knows where every bank robber's bank bags are. Come on here. Gold still sitting in it. Amen. You watch things that happen in the old west. That stuff for real. Money still hid places. And God said, I'm about to give you the treasures of the hidden riches of the secret places of darkness. 
Why? So that you may know that I, the Lord, which call you by name, I am God. I'm the God of Israel. He's going to let you know he's Jehovah Kyle for us all over with. Deuteronomy 8 and 18 says, remember that it is the Lord your God that give of you what? power to get wealth. God said, I'm giving you the ability to get wealth. We ain't talking about a dollar or two. We ain't talking, oh man, we was at church the other day and Brother Randy, <laughs> he said a friend of his told him, talking about a man came up to him and said, I got a miracle from God in the mail today. So he read to hear it. He said, I got a credit card pre-approved with a $10,000 limit. He just kept looking. He said, now where's the miracle from God? See, the boy thought that was a miracle from God. That was a trap from the devil. Come on here. You about to be in a $10,000 pit. Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. We got to know what's God and what ain't. Come on now. You got to understand what's a blessing and what's a snare. Isaiah 60 and verse 5. Then shall thou see and from now, now you got to start from verse one. It talks about a rise and shine. Why? Because the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Remember, there's an anointing coming on you. So in that glory, that presence is upon you. After that anointing gets upon you, said, Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the what? Abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. Now there's two renderings here. The sea is the unorganized mass of of humanity and that's going to be converted. God said we're going to bring in the harvest. That means we're going to snatch a whole bunch of folks out the kingdom of darkness. They get ready to come into the kingdom of God. See the anointing is going to channel resources into your life and into his kingdom. God said I want to give you some money so you can get me some people. Come on here. Some lost souls. And so all of a sudden he said the resources of the sea are going to be converted unto you. The second rendering of that is amen that the dead sea was dead for years until they learned how to how to get the salt and different stuff out of it. And now there's more wealth coming out of what used to be the Dead Sea than anybody ever thought it would be at the time of this prophecy. But the second part of this verse also says, and I like this, and the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. That word forces right there is the same Hebrew word, kail. The abundance, the wealth, the resources are the forces and they come into you. They come into you that's anointed with the anointing of wealth, favor, with a kingdom assignment, with a kingdom purpose. It's coming into your life and into his kingdom. You the channel has got to come to you so it can go through you. And God said it's coming. The forces, the wealth, the resources, the riches of the Gentiles. Of the, that's just, that ain't nothing but the wealth of the wicked being given over to the sin. You got to understand the wealth of the sinners given to the righteous. God is working this thing in the way you look at it. In the book, of, in the Amplified Bible, it says you shall see and be radiant and your heart shall thrill and tremble with joy at the glorious deliverance and be enlarged because the abundant wealth of the Dead Sea shall be turned to you unto you have shall... Been encouraged through the uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, send at $8 for compact disc or $20 for video to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a Truth Ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.